Where's your pride? Don't you realize he doesn't love you at all? Stop humiliating yourself and let him go. Helen spoke condescendingly and mockingly, as if she had to explain elementary things to a mentally ill person. However, the mentally ill did not particularly listen to the words of a young and frisky girl as Helen considered herself. On the contrary, the interlocutor was self-confident, talking calmly and condescendingly. You're still young and stupid. Well, nothing, smart people learn from other people's mistakes and fools from their own. Obviously, the experience of such fools has taught you nothing. How dare you? You. You old, boring, grumpy woman. He loves me. And he's only with you temporarily, and that's out of pity. We'll see. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Helen met Max on a rainy fall evening. She was freezing at the bus stop, the bus didn't want to come, and cab drivers were charging unheard of sums. Her throat was traitorously sore, and water squelched loudly in her beautiful but completely impractical shoes. Perhaps all these factors played a decisive role in pushing her to agree to get into a car with a strange man, something she had never done before. He pulled up to the bus stop and watched her from his car for about 10 minutes. Then he drove closer, got out and offered her a ride. Girl, I see there's no transportation today. There's only one route going that way, so we're definitely on our way. Let me give you a ride. You're freezing to the bone. Don't, the stranger's teeth were chattering from the cold. If in doubt, take a picture of my license plate number and send it to a reliable person, husband or mom. If in half an hour you are not standing on the doorstep of the apartment, they will easily find me. Aha! And then you'll change it. How do I know you're not a maniac who kills girls this way? That's quite an imagination you've got. Still, there's no bus and you're already blue from the cold. Let's go. Otherwise, I'll have to carry tangerines to the hospital. I don't like tangerines. Apples it is. Max opened the door for the girl, which no other suitor had ever done for her. The interior of the car was warm, smelled delicious, played quiet music. It didn't take a couple minutes for the girl to warm up and fall asleep. How long she slept in the car, Helen did not know. She opened her eyes abruptly and saw that she was sitting in an unfamiliar car near her driveway. There was a man sitting behind the wheel and looking at her with a smile. The first thing that came to her mind was, I'm still dreaming, as this doesn't happen in reality. However, the man spoke, confirming his reality. So, Sleeping Beauty? Not such a bloodthirsty monster I turned out to be? Is this your house and entryway? I doubted, as you said the address already asleep, and I did not want to wake you up. Yes, that's right. Thanks for the ride. Helen hesitantly grabbed the doorknob, hoping the man would stop her. He'd offer to chat, ask for her phone number. However, the mysterious stranger made no move. So, Helen disappeared disappointedly into the entranceway without even turning around. His last act hurt the girl's ego, so she continued to remember him all evening. She even dreamed about him. It was obvious that he was older than her. Probably ten years or so older. Judging by the suit and the car, the man was not poor. He was also well-mannered. And no one had gotten their hands on such a treasure? Strange. Reasoned aloud the girl. But what kind of treasure is he? If not even asked for a number, did not get acquainted. He could not not notice how beautiful I am. So, either married, or... In the morning, leaving the entrance to work, Helen found a familiar car. Good morning, girl who doesn't like tangerines. How are you feeling? You don't have a cold? The passenger window opened. Morning. No. I've got a surefire way to keep from getting sick, Helen was a little taken aback, not expecting yesterday's man to arrive. Really? What is it? A secret. What are you doing here? I thought I'd make sure you didn't catch a cold and give you a ride to work. 
We're on the way, remember? No. Thank you very much. Happy Helen jumped in the car and chirped like a bird all the way to work. In the evening, Max asked her out on a date. So began their romance, which was gaining momentum quite sharply. Dates almost every day, flowers, cafes, kisses at the entrance. Max rarely visited her and never invited her to his place. It was almost impossible to reach him on weekends. He only occasionally responded to messages. In the evening he was usually unavailable too, explaining it by fatigue at work, daily regimen and other nonsense. Helen, though in love to the core, was not a fool, so she guessed that the man was sly and hiding something. One day, on a weekend, she saw him at the mall, with his wife and two children, the youngest of whom was not even a year old. Helen's first impulse was to go and tell his wife, to expose the treacherous traitor. To give him a whipping. But, in time, she decided to act more subtle and cunning. He was an enviable man, but his wife was a wretch. She didn't suit him at all. She made him look so miserable. But with Helen, his eyes lit up. So, he had to act. A wife is not a wall, she'll move. In the evening Helen, looking like an insulted queen, told Max that she'd seen him with his wife. She pouted theatrically and wouldn't even let him hug her. She did everything she could to make sure he didn't want to leave and go back to his wife. Baby! No offense. Yeah, I didn't say I was married. But she and I have already filed for divorce. It's just that we have small children, so they're dragging it out in court. It's only because of the kids that I live with her. Otherwise, I'd have moved in with you a long time ago. My wife and I were over a long time ago. Believe me. To be honest, it was only when I met you that I knew what it was like to really love. My wife and I had an arranged marriage, and we'd only been going out for a couple months before that. I had nowhere else to go. And you're my soul mate. I don't want to live without you. Helen listened and felt herself melting like butter on a griddle. A more experienced girl would have noticed the tons of noodles that had already settled on her ears. But Helen had no experience, but she had ambition, self-confidence, and the certainty that she was the only one Max would be happy with. Meanwhile, Max continued, determined to consolidate the result. Baby, my wife is no match for you. You don't know what kind of woman she is. Mean, petty, lazy. Doesn't do anything around the house, demands to hire a cleaning service. She just had a baby, she can't keep up. No way. Wow. What's the big deal, babysitting? A lot of people have time to take care of their kids, and keep house, and don't neglect themselves. Poor you. It's so hard for you with her. I'm sure it is. She not only ran the house, but also the children. The eldest squeaks, he has a gadget. And the youngest is in his crib all day with toys. When I come home in the evening, I've got nothing to do. And then there are kids screaming, she puts them in my hands, as if she's tired, and I've been resting all day. Oh, honey, I feel sorry for you. She's disgusting. You can't do that to a man, the head of the family, the breadwinner. You're at work all day, and she's just lying on the couch. She could have given her husband a rest, cooked something tasty. No way. I've forgotten when I've ever seen a decent meal. It's all deliveries, fast food, convenience foods. I have to cook on the weekends because she needs to rest too. From what? She's on vacation, and I'm busy at work every day. Helen listened and her heart was filled with tenderness and pity for her beloved. Such a caring, attentive, kind man, and such a lazy woman next to him. Who does not appreciate, does not respect does not support, does not love. Helen decided by all means to save her beloved from the clutches of the ex, and that that is already without five minutes ex, Helen did not doubt. I am better than his wife, so he does not love her and should be mine. All I have to do is push him to the right decision, her mind raced. 
Max had promised that he and his wife would definitely be divorced in a couple of months. However, neither in a couple or three months his marital status did not change. Then he has problems at work, no time for the courts. Then in court they stall for time, because the children are small. Then his wife suddenly fell ill, you can't leave her in such a state. Six months passed. Helen decided to take more decisive action. If Max was so worried about the children, then the child can convince him to change his unloved wife to his favorite. The girl dodged and managed to get pregnant, so that the beloved quickly divorced and raised their common fruit of love. It cannot be said that Max was delighted with the news. His first reaction was shock. How else to explain his long silence and then his hesitant suggestion? Baby, it's only a short time, it's not a baby yet, just a lump. Let me give you some money or I'll pay for it myself. Good clinic, the best doctor. There will be no consequences. You can have the baby, but later. What? Do you hear yourself? Later when? I'm pregnant now. It's our baby. Are you out of your mind? Helen flared up, forcing her lover to hide for a while. Max didn't show up for a few days, and Helen even thought that he had completely slipped away. However, he did call. Long complained about life, about financial difficulties. Hinted that another child would be difficult to maintain so that his wife did not recognize. But at the same time, he languidly offered to provide for Helen and the baby. A smart girl at this point would have sent the indecisive lover far away, but Helen was not smart, so she agreed to give birth without a firm belief that Max would marry her. Max exhaled, thinking how easy and simple everything had turned out. Now he had a few months before Helen would turn into a balloon and become good for nothing in bed. But Helen had other plans. Since her lover was hardly ever in her life, she decided to act decisively. She called Max's wife and told her everything. In her dreams, the news was to upset the stupid and angry wife, so that she threw Max right into Lennon's arms. She had no doubt that he would run to her. After all, now she had a child too. So, everything was going according to plan. Helen had prepared a fiery speech for Max's wife. Described how happy they were with him, how he is burdened by marriage. How he's tired of his wife's laziness and grumpiness and how easy and comfortable he is with Helen. Anyway, I hope you'll let him go and give us a chance to be happy. Helen spoke confidently, holding the phone to her ear. However, contrary to Helen's expectations, her wife was in no hurry to get upset, become hysterical and scold her with the last words. Sighing tiredly and without even changing her voice, the woman answered. Oh, well, what a fool you are still. How old are you? Twenty-three? That's all right, you'll wise up. You're stupid, he's not going anywhere. You'll feed your child yourself, and my husband will never leave. I'll tell you more, he won't help your child. Do you hear yourselves? He loves me. Do you understand? He loves me. He'll love our son too. He loves no one. And he loves you and your son even less. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. You say that out of jealousy and spite. Where is your pride? Don't you realize he doesn't love you at all? Stop groveling and let him go. Helen spoke condescendingly and mockingly, as if she had to explain elementary things to a mentally ill person. However, the mentally ill did not particularly listen to the words of a young and frisky girl, as Helen considered herself. On the contrary, the interlocutor was self-confident, talking absolutely calmly. You're still young and stupid. Well, nothing, the smart learn from other people's mistakes, and fools on their own. Obviously, the experience of such fools has taught you nothing. How dare you? You. You old, boring, grumpy woman. He loves me. He's only with you temporarily, and that's out of pity. I'm only five years older than you. And what he said about me, that's the kind of noodles that make people like you run away faster. 
How dare you? I dare you. Max is a real piece of work. Every time we fight, he finds a stupid girl like this. Just to assert himself, to feel like a man. I can't count the number of times we've been married. But he always comes back to me. With an expensive gift, begs for forgiveness and then like a silk walks for a very long time. And every time, that rag crawls back to its corner. Back to his place. Get it. Isn't it funny? Making up stuff like that. Honestly, I had a better opinion of you. That's what Max said. A grumpy woman. And a fantasist, too. He'll be mine. I won't give him to you without a fight. For God's sake. Let's see how long it takes for him to crawl away from you. There's been a dozen of you already. All of you said he'd choose them. You're all lying. He's in love with me. I'm sure of it. Well, well, well. When you grow up, you'll realize that all men go back to their wives, the woman replied with a laugh. That day Max blocked Helen, and all attempts to contact him, suppressed, afraid even to talk and explain. Helen was desperate. She tried to call Max, but he completely ignored her calls and messages. She decided to spook him outside his work. When Max came out of the office, Helen rushed to him pleading with him to listen and give her a chance to make things right. But Max coldly replied that it was over between them and he didn't have time to discuss the subject. Then Helen came to his house when Max was alone. She begged him to come back, saying that she loved him and was ready to take care of him and their future son. But Max said he didn't need her, he wasn't going to change anything in his life because of a casual fling and asked her not to come back. Upset Helen decided to try to win his wife's sympathy. She came to her with apologies, tearfully said that she loved Max and begged her to help them be together. But Max's wife coldly replied that it was not her problem. Having failed with everyone, Helen in despair wrote a letter to Max, where she begged one last time to give her a chance. But there was no reply. Having suffered a humiliating defeat, Helen decided not to give up. She began to hatch a plan of revenge against Max and his wife. First, Helen stalked Max outside his workplace. When he passed by, she poured coffee on him and shouted loudly that he was a scoundrel and a cheat. She made a lot of noise and damaged his reputation in the eyes of his co-workers. Then Helen tracked down the kindergarten Max's oldest son went to. She went there several times and told the boy that his daddy was a bad man who made her cry very hard. The child retold this to his parents, because of which the family began to quarrel. And then Helen decided to hit the sore spot. She wrote an anonymous letter to Max's workplace with fictitious accusations of embezzlement and fraud. Max was called in for an inspection and almost fired until the accusations were refuted. But even that didn't seem enough for Helen. She continued to follow Max's family, hatching ever more elaborate plans of revenge, until one day she herself was not detained by the police. Helen had reached the end of her rope. Her revenge didn't seem enough and Max was still as distant as ever. One night, when feelings of frustration, anger and jealousy came over her with renewed vigor, Helen took a desperate step. She armed herself with a can of gasoline and sneaked out to Max's house under the cover of darkness. His car was parked nearby. Helen doused the car with gasoline, got matches and set it on fire before fleeing the scene. Unfortunately for her, their neighbor was walking her dog at the time and witnessed the arson. She immediately called the police and described the appearance of the woman she had seen. A few hours later, Helen was apprehended at her workplace. The evidence of her guilt was abundant. Helen tried to justify herself, but the police were adamant. She faced a prison sentence for willful destruction of property. The court sentenced Helen to one year in prison for willful destruction of property. She was not even lucky enough to be in the final months of her pregnancy. The birth came when Helen was already serving her sentence in the women's prison. She had to give birth in the prison hospital under the escort of the warders. There were no family members around. Only a doctor and a paramedic. 
The labor was hard and long. Helen screamed in pain and humiliation. She cursed the day and hour when she had first seen Max. Because of him she had to go through this hell, losing a year of her life locked up. After the birth, Helen and the baby were placed in the prison infirmary. So, stupidity and bitterness completely broke the young woman's life. After serving her time, Helen came out of prison a completely different person. Humiliation, pain and loneliness made her think about her life. The first time was very hard. No one wanted a young mom with a prison record and a baby in her arms. But Helen didn't break down. She got a low-paying job, rented a tiny apartment and began to rebuild her life bit by bit. She was lucky to meet people from the church parish who supported her with kind words and help. Helen began to attend church often. She made peace with her past and found faith that only good changes awaited her on her new path. After a few years, Helen was able to forgive Max and his wife. She realized that that story was a good lesson for her. Even though the memories still hurt, Helen got rid of the anger in her heart. She began working at a church orphanage, helping lost souls like she had once been. Thus a new, bright life opened up for Helen, full of forgiveness, love and concern for others. Despite the high-profile scandal with Helen, Max never learned the lessons of the story. He continued to look for easy wins and pleasures on the side. His wife for a long time tolerated cheating, for the sake of the children trying to keep the family. But the years went by, and Max never changed his attitude. The last straw was another young mistress, with whom Max was no longer hiding. He stopped sparing his wife's feelings. After another scandal because of cheating, she filed for divorce. Max did not care much about this, because to replace one woman he always had another. But over time, Max was left alone. Children did not want to communicate with him after he destroyed their family. Yes, and young mistresses quickly tired of a selfish man, unable to truly love. So reckless behavior eventually led to a cruel retribution for Max, he lost his family, the respect of loved ones and was eventually left all alone with his weaknesses and vices.